Okay, so finally we've got the tools we need to work out the mass and the orbit of one of these planets. We'll assume the planet is in an edge-on orbit. So this will give us a lower limit on the mass. Um, there actually turn out to be three planets in the system. We'll just pick one of them as an example of how you do the calculation. This one, the closest in, has a period of 25.262 days. Note the exquisite precision and the timing, the pulses arrive by plus or minus three microseconds. So it's not a very big effect, but quite big enough for these beautiful pulsar data uh, to measure them. So, we know that the radius of the orbit of the planet around the pulsar is given by the cube root gravitational constant, the mass of the pulsar, the period squared, all over 4 pi squared. So for the period we have the value here, we have to convert to seconds by multiplying by 24 and then 60 and then 60 again. The mass of the pulsar is a bit trickier uh, normally, for reasons we'll go into in the Violent Universe course, pulsars are assumed to be about 1.4 times the mass of the Sun. Everything else in there we know, and that comes out with 2.8 by 10 to the 10 meters, which is about 0.19 astronomical units so far closer in the Mercury in our own solar system. Now we can fit that into the equation telling us m1 over m2 equals r over r1 minus 1. Now we're assuming the inclination is edge on, so this is a lower limit, it could be higher. Um, we've calculated r from up here. R1 we get from this is telling us that there's 30 microseconds, so we have to multiply that by the speed of light to get the distance. Because if it takes 3 microseconds to travel, 3 microseconds extra, we know the speed of light, 300,000 kilometers a second, that's telling us how much extra distance, and that turns out to be about 900 meters. So that's a very tiny wobble, 900 meters. You know, my kids walk further than that to school every day. So, but with the exquisite precision of pulsar measurements, you can actually pick up such a tiny wobble in a pulsar that's you know, hundreds of light years away. It's absolutely staggering. Anyway, you feed uh, this as R1 down here. R we've got from up there. We can ignore the minus one. It's going to be negligible. That gives us the ratio of the masses. And we end up, according to this, with the mass of the planet, M2, of about 9 by 10 to the 22 kilograms, which is about 0 0.02 times the mass of the Earth. So very small. Now you can do the calculation better than this. Here we've assumed a John orbit. Uh, you probably have to allow for the really slightly inclined. Normally you can't tell what the inclination is. In this case you have a few other clues. You could, for example, look at how the planets affect each other. So for example, the bigger further out planets will actually pull on the inner one. So it's not as simple as just going in orbit around the sun. And that slight pull has actually has measurable effects. So that actually allows you to work out roughly how heavy they are and what the inclination angle is. Likewise, you can allow for the fact the orbits are not quite circular and get somewhat better values. But this gives you some idea of how roughly to work it out.